I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 17th of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today we have another house tour. We're going to be heading back to the Reparto Veracruz. That is a reparto within the municipality of Sutiava on the west side of Leon between the city and the beach, pretty close, just a little bit west of the Barrio Sutiava. We have a really interesting three bedroom, three bath, what I call monastery house. This is a freestanding, very unique, eclectic, and fancy house that I think is going to be really interesting for everyone. So we're going to be showing that today. And uh, we're also going to, at the end of the episode, I'm going to be tacking on some miscellaneous footage. So we're going to do our show. We're going to do the, the main topic. And then I'm just going to tack on miscellaneous footage. I've been collecting a lot of footage and it just accumulates on my hard drive. And I save it as if I'm going to put it into things. And I really should just put it on so those who are interested can watch it. And those who aren't can, can just let it run in the background while they go make coffee or whatever. And uh, at least it'll get out there and I don't have to keep saving it, which gets in my way. So we're going to get to all of that right after the bump. Like I said, it is the 17th of July. If you've been watching the last few episodes, which hopefully you all have, you'll know I kept saying one day off or actually a couple days off on some of the episodes. I think I have my dates correct now. It's a little bit difficult. It, it really is challenging to do this. And I often have to record things dramatically out of order. So today, our show, we are heading to the Reparto Veracruz. And while I'm talking, I'm gonna bring up a map so you can see exactly where that is. Repartos are like barrios, which is basically a neighborhood, but it refers to one that is farther out from the city. So the next uh, closer barrio is Barrio Sutiava. As you head west into the city, technically there's a couple of really small communities and colonias in between, but uh, that is our next major thing is the Barrio Sutiava. Veracruz is a reparto. So you technically can be part of the city, uh, but they are thought of as being more suburban. That's more or less how the naming works. So this is still an urban area, but hedging on the suburban. So it tends to be bigger houses. It tends to be little little bit safer. Again, we always say this, the city is very, very safe, but the repartos are even safer, just like it would be in the United States. You could be in a very safe city, but your suburbs of that city are almost always, not always, almost always going to be quite a bit safer just because you're dealing with people who are more affluent, you're dealing with larger houses, you're dealing with more security, it's harder, it's more work to commit crime. So you just you just get more safety naturally through all those things. So we know that, right? So this is a suburb and for uh, expats, or for Nicaraguans who are looking for something more expatty, a place where you'll have more space, a place where you can do more things. Um, this, this can be an area that uh, you may like a lot. If you're watching my show a bit, you know that I love the Reparto of Veracruz. It is absolutely beautiful, has really nice, interesting communities within it, uh, really nice streets, uh, some, some really great houses. We've walked past many. Unfortunately, there's some really awesome ones. They have not let us film. Some of you have asked for us to film specific ones, and we've gone out and tried, and they've just flat out refused, which is often the case. Uh, so we're still struggling getting into a lot. People do not like showing their houses in a lot of cases. So we're very lucky with this one today that we got a great house that we had. And this house has been shown from the outside on previous episodes. So if you look for it, you may be able to find it and be like, oh, there he is. He, he actually mentions this house. And I think I didn't know it was for sale at the time. And I'm like, this one I think is for sale or for, for rent or whatever. And then we, we discovered that it actually was. Uh, so, so this one, it's worth noting, is not available. We actually had someone through Relocate Nicaragua ask us to go look at uh, for houses. This house came up, we looked at it, we filmed it. So this footage is actually months old uh, and they took it immediately. Like this ended up being exactly the house uh, that they wanted in, in the right location and everything. So uh, it went very quickly. Um, so it's not available. So this is just an idea of, of price points and features and styles that you may find here. This one is absolutely so different than other houses we've shown that I, I think you're going to find it really interesting and, and fun and valuable to see this because uh, just like in United States or Canada, you get a large variety of houses. We expect that. We're used to it. But Nicaragua being a small market, the way that we tend to think about Nicaragua, we often think about it being very uniform, very homogenous. And that's not at all the case. Nicaragua, like anywhere else, is just full of variety and taking that variety and putting it into a Nicaraguan context is what's fun and interesting and what we're what we're really interested in. So 
the uh, uh, this house stands out to me and I keep referring to it as the monastery house and you'll see why when we get into it every angle everything you look at in this house feels like you're in a monastery now when you go into the house it's not that big it's a three bed three bath and it's that Nicaraguan style that I've mentioned recently where there's no public bathroom it is there's a bedroom with an associated bathroom three times there is nothing else now we'll look um, and I'm going to describe this a little bit before we actually do the video so you know what to look for and what to expect. There is uh, multiple pods of this house. It is not a single structure. It is uh, three, I believe, separate structures connected by outside walls and gates, creating the feeling of a single structure. And remember, here in Nicaragua, we have a tendency to think of outdoor space and indoor space as interchangeable. So a lot of times having an outdoor patio or an outdoor just roofed area uh, connecting things together or, or just sometimes flooring connecting things together is enough to make us feel like we have a singular house, even though it may technically be separate structures. And we looked at one a long time ago in Fatima that was actually like six or seven completely separate structures with one large roof over the entire thing. And it really felt like a singular house, but it was many freestanding structures with just this roof. It was a really interesting design and it made for all these hallways and, and intricate things that felt like it would be very hard to make. And then when you actually looked at it, you're like, oh, they just put a little cube here, a little cube here, just kind of the way they laid them out made it feel like it had all these hallways and complicated things, very different than how you actually pictured it when you're standing there, when you, when you kind of dissected it in that way. So it's very interesting sometimes. So this house is a little bit like that. Three independent structures that are essentially big open spaces with a bathroom and a closet. The main house has a little bit more, which you'll see living rooms, kitchen, bodega, that kind of stuff. But there isn't additional uh, independent space. It's basically just the public space and then the same setup. The bedroom in the main part of the house, which is against the front of the house, has a really interesting, and I say that in the Midwest way, a very strange uh, setup for the bathroom where the bathroom doesn't actually have a door. You could add one, obviously, uh, you could do a lot of things and you can always close the door to the room, and the ba but the bathroom's open to the bedroom, which I do not like as a style, but we've seen that in the United States as well, but it's definitely not something I like. And um, that one is very close to the living room and to the other public spaces, and so would function very obviously as the public bathroom for the house. Because of that, because of the layout of the, this house, even though it's very large and very ornate, I feel that it really functions best as a, uh, a, a one to two bedroom house with those bedrooms being their own pods in the back. And the way it's designed is there's a very formal main house and then there's a really, really nice uh, master bedroom that is not part of the main house, it's connected by a wall. And then there is what is intended to be a servant's quarters, a staff quarters, right? And so that one is, is quite ample and fancy and one is quite a bit more basic. And so it could be, uh, you know, parents and children's rooms. It could be owners and, and staff rooms. It could be uh, a utility room. There's a lot of things you could do with it. But what it is not really well designed for is for if you're going to have any number of public guests, if anybody's going to be coming to visit you at the house, this what appears to be the master bedroom towards the front of the house doesn't function as a bedroom well at all. Uh, it's very awkward. So I think for the majority of people who would have been looking at this house or look at styles like this, uh, that room is really good as an office or really good as a utility room where you're gonna do things, a hobby room. Uh, if you're my sister-in-law, it would be where she does um, her, her creative stuff, her craft room, right? That room would be absolutely perfect for those things. You don't mind people going through a hobby or a craft or an office to go use a public bathroom. Not a problem in most cases. Cases, but your bedroom is not a place where you normally want people traipsing. Nicaraguans will sometimes put up with that. It's a little bit different of a culture, but I don't think they like it either. Uh, but bedrooms are not seen quite the same way as this extremely private space necessarily. Uh, and so I think in this house, thinking of that as an office and thinking of this as a two bedroom with amazing grand office makes it make a lot more sense. So when we go through the house, I want you to kind of look at that from that context. And I think you'll say, okay, it doesn't sleep as many people as I was expecting, but it's amazing spaces for the price, for the location, all that. And the location in Veracruz is amazing because Veracruz sits just outside the city. So if you want to go into the city, you're still getting like Pedidos Ja and Ugo deliveries, 
that makes life really easy. Uh, if you want to take a taxi, they're still cheap. We're currently paying about 100 cords at night, which is the peak time, uh, peak price time, to go into the city. So it's just under three dollars, uh, which is expensive for Leon. Normally, you'd spend about a dollar fifty going around the city, but there are going to be price premiums to come out, but it's not a big deal, especially if you're not doing it all the time. If you have a car, then it's really nothing at all. Uh, and so if you want to go into the grocery stores, you want to go into the bars, you want to do all that's very accessible. You're not giving that up by living out in this reparto. And if you're like me, I still walk in. Um, and as I'm recording this, last night when I came home from the bar, I didn't feel like paying $3 for a taxi, so I walked home. That's a th real thing that I do, and I live farther than uh, Reparto, Veracruz. So yeah, I walk past all of these houses, everything in the Reparto, I walk past and think very little of it uh, to walk home. And I'm coming from very far into the city, not, not the nearer restaurants, not the west side or anything like that. I'm coming from the east side of downtown all the way. Uh, out past the Reparto, and it's it's not a bad walk. I do walk farther than most people, I understand, but it, it gives you some context. All right, so it's not very far. So all the city remains accessible to you, but the cost of Veracruz goes down on a per square foot. Generally, the houses are bigger. Generally, the houses are fancier, so you're looking at more expensive living, but you're getting more for your money because it's a Reparto. The cost per square foot of, of lot space, of whatever, goes down but it's on the beach road. The Reparto sits just south of the Ponaloya Beach Road. So from the Reparto out to the beach, you have no city traffic because the Reparto starts after the city limits. So, or, or it is the, the outer city limits, depending on how you look at it. So going out to the beach only takes about 12 to 14 minutes without any traffic hassle. And that's the biggest thing. Now this does cause a little bit of a negative going into the city. The Mercadito of Sutiava, which is the main market of the Sutiava region, sits between this reparto and the city itself. So you always have to drive through that, and that is always a traffic disaster. So that is a negative going into the city. Going out to the beach, though, so easy, so quick, and no effort. If you want to do it on bicycle, you want to do it in a golf cart, you want to do it in a car, you want to do it on foot like I have from this area, all of that very doable. For reference on foot, Google says about three hours. I did it with a broken foot in four hours in the dark. So it's it's all very so It's a great location. It's a beautiful part of the city. That it's super safe. The neighborhood is beautiful. Your neighboring houses are beautiful. Uh, you've got a lot going for this. So I'm I'm very excited to bring this house to you, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Get down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know uh, questions you have about this house. Uh, all that. Ask away. Um, but we're going to walk you through this and try to show the whole thing. And a lot of it's about potential, right? Remember, we say this uh, quite a bit. Houses in Nicaragua, they don't clean them. They don't do repairs. They don't do any of that until you've rented it. Until they know you're moving in on Monday, they're not going to do it until Friday. Right, so, so the house is not cleaned, none of the repairs are done, the gardens are just dirt or weeds. All You have to picture, what would I do here? Would I put in a fountain? Would I put in a formal garden? Would I put in tables? Would I, what would, there's nothing, there's no staging, nothing like that. So um, at this time, it's completely different, uh, and all of, the, all of the fancy stuff was done, all the cleaning, all the repairs, those are all done before anyone moved in. Uh, that, is, that really does happen but they're not gonna do it for when we do videos. So you're gonna see it in worse repair than the homeowner ever saw it uh, by the time he got there. So without further ado, let's go look at this house. All right, this is the monastery house. We called it this from day one. Beautiful house, lots of great space. You come straight into this grand salon. This is like your public space where you're gonna host guests. But here on the side, a formal living room really really nice as well and very big i cannot believe how big these spaces are in a three bedroom house so you have these two bedrooms it's very common in nicaragua to have two salons right next to each other two living rooms uh, one is like you're watching tv the other is where you're entertaining guests so it's more like a parlor and a living room this is the room i was saying this is the front bedroom it is designed to be a bedroom but it is not well suited for it it is long and narrow it has lots of windows to the outside and the bathroom has no door I think this makes a fantastic office, like truly epic. You want those front windows, that, that 
access to the outside world for an office space, but for your actual bedroom, I think it's it's quite a negative. This is the formal dining room, very big as well, part of that three major public space rooms right next to each other. And if you include that front office, four big public spaces. This entire front building is the public space. This is the kitchen, obviously. Going to need to add appliances, same in every house. It's got the bodega or pantry in this case, right here off the kitchen, very dark, but everything else is very well lit. The kitchen is nothing special, but it is very adequate. Lots of good space. It does have a door that goes onto the side yard and the entire yard of this house is walled. So you have very private outdoor spaces as well. We're gonna poke our noses out here. You can see that the salons look into what is a garden that we're gonna be walking out into in just a second. High ceilings in here, the, the chandeliers and these ceilings and these arches is what gives us this monastery feeling. A lot of airspace. Now, notice separate buildings and big arches onto this beautiful garden space. Again, it's just weeds, but you can imagine what you can do with those walls, that big space. There could be a fountain, there could be gardens, there could be any number of things. This is the side garden, which we're gonna see more of later. Lots and lots of space inside the walls. So you have a lot to work with on the outdoor here. This is what we consider the actual master bedroom. Very big space, bigger than that front office space, we'll call it. And it has closets. That front one does not, making it more of an office. This has a big walk-in. It's really good. And the bathroom is quite good. It could use some paint and some lights, but it's a very good space. This bedroom is its entire is, is its own building in entirety. The public spaces of the house is one building, and each of the bedrooms are another building. They're connected very heavily. It doesn't feel like you're going from building to building, but you actually are. You'll see that attaching wall right there. It's the only thing holding these two buildings to each other. We've got the regular laundry space. It's the same in every house. And then this is the third bedroom or the second, however you want to look at it. It's smaller, much more just very plain and simple, but it does have a little bit of closet space there on the left built into the bathroom space. Definitely not as fancy, definitely not as big as the main bedroom. For me, I think this space, and then and then on the side here, this is the open air area. This is where you can do laundry, uh, hang the laundry to dry. This is where you get the air to keep the house cool. You could put in a garden here as well, maybe something very, very simple, but you have a lot of outdoor space you can work with in this house. It is absolutely beautiful, and everything comes together at this big garden there on the right. Plus you have this little garden area on the left, like you could do like a separate type of garden with this walkway in between. The opportunities for gardening here are kind of epic. I love the style of this house. I love how unique this is. And I love these big spaces, but it operates almost like a one really amazing bedroom house. So for someone who is on their own, it is perfect. For someone with kids, it's going to be a little bit tough. And if you have any number of people, it's going to get really, really rough. So a single person or a couple could do really well. Now I want to point out this front yard. So the front fence is open. You got views to everything, but you have a lot of kind of public facing potential garden space out here in the front. You got trees. None of it's kept up, of course but you could do so much. And you have this big curved driveway, which is beautiful. You can just park your cars there or turn them around. And if you want, you also have this, well, there's no garage, but there's this spot meant for parking vehicles. You could get at least three vehicles, maybe more in that space. Uh, but you could also turn that entire side into gardens or even an orchard. And again, that's walled. Three sides are solid walls, and then the front is all fenced. So it's a, it's a beautiful setup. And in a moment here, we're gonna see behind this front building, that is the master bedroom on the left, the building on the left, and the public space on the right, that area between them is completely private garden. Now we're gonna get a little bit of view over the walls just to see what the neighbors are like. Uh, but there's a lot that you can do with gardening in this house to make it a completely different place, whether it's water features, trees, formal gardens, wild gardens, you can do so many different things and, and really give this property character. There's so much space to work with and this is just another look at the front. So I hope you like this tour of the house and only $420. So that was our house tour for the day. What a great house, absolutely fantastic. 
fantastic, great location, everything going for this house. So this is something I really like, and it's no surprise that it went right away. Everything, the price, the location, the actual house itself, very cool, so much potential, and I can't wait to see more of it. And hopefully we get to film it for you when a lot more is done with it so you can see kind of what has been done in the future. That would be fantastic. Now, before we get on to anything else, I'm going to do our take a moment to please, if you'd be interested in supporting the channel, I'm going to put a link up above for Buy Me A Coffee. And that link is buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. Just go to that full link and you can buy me a coffee that sends me $5 and helps pay for everything we do here on the channel, right? Whether it's the cameras or the editing equipment, whatever, the travel, the gas to go places, the time to be able to do it. It's very expensive to do a lot of these things, so I very much appreciate the uh, the all of you who, who take a moment to sponsor. For those who are looking for assistance in finding a house like this, as had happened with this particular house, uh, if you'd like to shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com, we would love to talk to you about how we can help, whether it's looking for the right village, looking for the right city, figuring out what life will be like for you in Nicaragua, helping you tour around the country, just doing a phone consultation, or actually looking for a house, shoot us an email, we'd love to help. Please remember to like and subscribe, Post the links for this episode on social media. Let people know about the show. Tell your friends. And now that we've done that, thank you. Do that while I'm talking. For those who are interested, we're going to show some uh, extra footage that we have. I have collected, and I'm going to get off of my hard drive of just things going on, of dogs, of places in the country. So Nicaragua stuff, personal stuff. It's just a chance uh, to collect some things and see it. So I hope that you enjoyed that, and I will see all of you tomorrow.
And that's our miscellaneous footage. I will see all of you tomorrow.